Because you'd have all these ladies walk up to you and say, did you try what I brought? Well, okay. Get a little spoon of that, get a little spoon of that. Next thing you know, your plate's piled up like this. Because you don't want to offend anybody. But I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, that's what my life was. It was a deep, dark, empty cistern. Now what's a cistern, brother? A cistern was a big hole that he was like hewn out of rock. And it had no, you know, the bottom was just like it was hewn out so that it couldn't leak. And so they would, during the rainy season and stuff, they would store water in that cistern. Well, these guys had gone to this one and it was empty and it was dry. There had been no water there for a long, long time. Sometimes people don't realize that the water that God gives them of life can dry up. We need to understand something. I have to feed myself. I have to do what I can. I don't even know exactly where I'm going with this. But I just want to let you know something. I, my life should dry any longer. I'm no longer in the bottom of the cistern. I haven't reached the top yet. Paul said, you know, I'm still striving. I haven't obtained it yet, but I'm still pushing. I'm still headed in that direction. And the sad part for me is that I know too many people that climbed halfway up the ladder. And it's almost like the act that the ladder got broke off and there's no more way to climb. Listen, I would encourage you today to keep climbing. Amen. Say, well, I get discouraged. So do I. I'm weak sometimes. So am I. That's why I'm so grateful that the Lord said he'd never leave me. Because in my weakest moments, I can call on him, and he's there. When I'm riding the crest of the wave on the mountaintop, and I feel him all over me, when that nudge of the Spirit just causes goosebumps to run up my back and you know, down my arm, I'm feeling him right now. It's like, thank you, Lord. I thank, I thank God that we have a living Savior. Amen. But you have to understand something. You're not going to get that. Please don't get mad at me by Facebook, but you're not going to get that from Buddha. You're not going to get that from Muhammad. You're not even going to get that from just saying, I love Allah. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. There's no way to heaven except through Jesus Christ. And he is our ladder to heaven. All I would tell you is that learn as much about him as you can. As the scripture says, as newborn babes. Grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. In Matthew 18, 3, it says, Except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. That's right. It's like I've got this responsibility to just keep going. Why? Well, the kids are watching. My grandchildren are watching. Little Chase come up here a little while ago and looked at me and said, he goes, man, when you and Pastor Rod get going on this, you rock this place. <laughs> I looked at Sandy, she said, wow. I'm just glad he listens. Amen. I'm just glad he hears. And more than that, I would be more wonderfully blessed if he feels yeah. what God is doing. That he would know that it's a wonderful thing to live for the Savior. My sister got saved at eight years old. She's always lived for God. Has she had any storms in her life? Yeah. Has she went through any battles? Yeah. Is she, does it look like she was going to quit at times? Yeah. But you know what? Somehow, some way, God kept her through all those years. It would have been wonderful to get saved in a young life. I would have cherished it, but I didn't. I was 23 years old when I came to Christ, but I'm so grateful that I came to Him. There's nothing like being a child of God. And then we move from the salvation into the baptism. And I'm not going to go through all this stuff because it would take all day. But, you know, we move from the baptism to the infilling of the Holy Spirit to the place where we learn how to praise and worship to the place where we learn how to understand His Word to the place where we come in and we get into the Holy of Holies and we let Him take over our lives and literally just show us and tell us exactly what we're supposed to do because He will do that. He will help you to be able to make right decisions. And in, in Romans 6, 3 through 13, it says, Know ye not that 
So many of us, as we're baptized into Jesus Christ, we're baptized into his death. When you, when you go into this tank to be baptized, what's actually happening is that you're actually uh, copying basically what Jesus did. You go into the liquid grave. He went into the grave. And then it says, and you rise. You come up out of that to walk in a brand new life. It's an outward testimony to all of the world that I've changed lords and I love Jesus. And so I'm going to go into this liquid grave to rise to walk in a brand new life. Amen. And it says, therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also shall walk in newness of life. For we have, if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. And the basically word there, freed, means to be justified. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more, dieth, death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let not sin, therefore, reign in your mortal body that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. It says these words, Jesus said them in Matthew 24. Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. I think we're there. I actually think we're there as far as in church history. The love of many has waxed cold. But he said these words after that. He said, but he that endures unto the end, the same shall be saved. If you've started the race and you've stopped, Put on your PF flyers or Converse or your Nikes and start running the race again. Amen. Will he take me back every time you call? People think sometimes, and I used to think this myself, well, I've messed up, he doesn't want me anymore. When he said, I'll never leave you, never forsake you, he wasn't kidding. He really wasn't kidding. And you can go down that long, dark path, walking back into sinful activity and a sinful life, and he'll go right with you. He'll follow you all the way down, even to the depths of the ugliness of sin. And he'll keep pulling at you, telling you how much he loves you, and keep pulling you back to himself. That's the God that we serve. He never gives up on us. Family may give up on you. Husbands give up on wives. Wives give up on husbands. Sometimes we give up on our children. I just don't know if they're ever going to come to Jesus. I just, I've been a praying for them forever. The only thing I can say to you is keep praying for them. Keep seeking God on their behalf. Keep asking the Holy Spirit to shape them wherever they're at. It's like my son Jacob over in England. I don't see him hardly ever even talk. But I feel in my heart God hasn't forgotten about Jacob. And we can't forget about him either. So we mention his name to God. We say, God, draw him to yourself. We pray for our own other children. Timmy and Caleb, Daniel, you know, Joe, pray for them. Pray for the grandchildren. Wednesday nights have been wonderful for me coming here and just praying because it gives me an opportunity to just get all by myself and just talk to God about stuff that sometimes we are too busy to talk to God about. Isn't that a shame? It's never a waste of time to spend time with God. Please, let's do that. Let's call on heaven. Let's, let's shake, as one brother said, the banisters of heaven and say, God, grab my children, grab my loved ones, grab my neighbors, grab my close friends, grab those people that I don't even know, and let them know how much you love them. 
Because Jesus Christ loves us. Jacob experienced the gate of heaven. The Bible said he saw the angels ascending and descending. One brother put it this way. They were going and taking messages up and bringing messages back down. Taking messages up, bringing messages back down. Well, what messages? Well, whatever you prayed for, <laughs> goes up to God. Whatever God answers, comes back down. Up, down, up, down. God's always, he hasn't forgotten about his people. He told Jacob, he said, I'll be with you till we get all this done. And I feel in my heart that God is saying the same thing to us. I'll be with you till we get all of this done. Don't quit. Don't stop. Don't keep, uh, keep on trusting me. Keep on praying. Keep on letting my word be a lamp to your feet and a light to your path. Let your light shine before men. Let people see that you really love Jesus. It's easy to be secret. It's easy to say, you know, I'm a Christian, but I just say anything about it. He ain't looking for no secret agent Christians. And neither do you want to be a snob. I'm saved and you're lost. <laughs> we don't want that attitude either. What we need to say is I'm saved and I want you to be. Amen. And I'm going to pray for you and I'm going to love you. And you can spit on me and laugh at me and say all bad things against me if you want to, but I'm still going to keep on loving you. Jesus said from the cross, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. You need to get that in your own spirit. When people do stuff wrong to you, Father, forgive them, they don't know what they're doing. Oh, yeah, we can get mad. We can give them a piece of our mind, those of us that can afford it. Uh, you caught that, didn't you? Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. We love you, Lois. So glad you're able to be with us today. Amen. The gate of heaven. I'm climbing it. How about you? I'm climbing that ladder. How about you? Just going to keep climbing? Amen. We'll get to the other side. It may not be tomorrow. It may not be the day after that. But one of these days we're going to cross over on that beautiful shore. And we're going to be with him forever and forever and forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Can't wait for that day. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's stand together. Come on, Sandy. Let's sing a song. I have it on the CD, but I'll just, we'll just sing it. Amen. What, is it? what a day that will be. Amen.
We are healed, mm -hmm. not might be. So receive it today. You Hallelujah. need something from God. You need a touch in your body. And I've been asking for mine. I was just like, I went out and started cutting grass this week. I said, I need help, Lord. <laughs> in Jesus' name. And I woke up this morning and I didn't feel too bad. Praise the Lord. So thank you, God, for yes. your touch on my life. Yes, amen. amen. And uh, we're praying for Timmy that he'll feel better after playing six games of softball. But, I mean, that's kind of the goes with the territory. You play that much, you're going to hurt when you're, you know, past 20. When you're past 30. Praise the Lord. Amen. I love you today. God bless you. Pray your day will be blessed. The weather's supposed to start to change. We're getting close to 80 degrees on Tuesday. Praise the Lord. So, go for a walk. Go enjoy the sunshine. Amen. Father, thank you for your love today and your mercy. Minister to us and strengthen us in all we say and do. Thank you for your word. Let it make us better than we've been before. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a great day.